Well, welcome everybody to the MasterCard Center as we get you set for CWHL Live. I'm Nico Cardarelli, joined in our booth by Adam Jenkins. We're glad you're here with us today for this great game as we have the Toronto Furies taking on the Canadian Montreal. We're excited to have you joining us here in Toronto and looking forward to seeing what these two teams bring to the ice here tonight. Adam, it should be one heck of a game as right now both of these two teams tied for first place. It's a four-way tie in the CWHL for top spot. Yeah, it's certainly early and not all teams have played the same amount of games, but right now it's Montreal's race to maintain and they have a dynamic offense, fantastic goaltending, and when you put it all together, it's going to be a fantastic game, especially when you get two of the marquee clubs, Toronto and Montreal. It's exciting no matter what the sport, what the circumstances are, you got to love it when two of the biggest cities go head-to-head. Yeah, there's nothing better than a Saturday night tilt between Montreal and Toronto, and that is the case here at the MasterCard Center tonight as we get set for the starting lineups and the national anthem. Toronto wearing their home blues here tonight, a little bit of white trim, whereas Montreal has their predominantly white sweaters with the red shouldering blue numbers and blue pants with some blue and red stripe on the mainly white socks. Got a nice little pregame here. Nice moment as we acknowledge the Women of Winter organization. And we get the two captains coming for the ceremonial face-off. Oh, a nice exchange there between two of the best female hockey players on the planet, but that'll be about all the niceties they have as they're about set to get down to business. We'll step aside for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem. Well, we're just about set for opening puck drop. Let's take a look at the numbers presented by MNP, and we'll start with the starting goaltenders for both teams. Adam, Toronto will turn to their rookie, Shea Tilly, here as she gets her third start of the season. Yeah, Tylee had a rough one to start the season uh, when Kulun Red Star, the Vancouver Rays were here. 3 nothing loss in that game, but they rebounded on the Wednesday night, the final of their three-game series, uh, where Toronto finally got on the board for the first time this season with a commanding 3-1 win. They hadn't gone back to her right away, so I'm interested to see how they transition back, but Tylee's looked good so far, and that opening scoreline not necessarily indicative of how she played to start the season. Montreal will turn to their vet, their young vet, who's taken over the game, and she's certainly one of the top goaltenders in the CWHL. It's Emerys Mashmeyer getting her fifth start of the season. Yeah, Mashmeyer's right up there at the top of the league for best net minors. Goaltender of the week after commanding wins 
that Montreal had over Markham last weekend in Montreal, outscoring Markham 12-2 in those games. And while the offense was on fire, Mashmeyer certainly played her role too, keeping Markham off the board. We're just about set for the opening puck drop here as Montreal will start with some of their big guns. No surprise to see and Sophie Bate, Marie Philippe Poulin, and the electrifying rookie, Melody Daou. Yeah, the McGill grad, she's been fantastic. And I mean, both these teams, every time you meet, you're gonna get a lot of Olympians going head to head. Really fantastic showcase of what women's hockey has to offer. Two of the best franchises in the league, as we mentioned. And it's always electrifying when we have these two clubs go head to head. It's kind of a mis misnomer calling her a rookie. She's such a vet. She's so <laughs> experienced in, in the game of women's hockey, but she is a CWHL rookie. And we're underway here from the MasterCard Center as Montreal win the opening puck drop. They get the puck to Dawu on the left wing. She tries to center it to the front of the net. Bate working after it. It's Poulin who comes up with it. She plays it back to the left point. As that shot gets tipped in front and just trickles wide of the near side post. Good early pressure from Montreal. As that was Aaron Ambrose, the former Toronto Fury, unleashing that shot from the left point. The Canadian bring it right back in. We got a delayed call here and this one will go against the Furies. Yeah, Nico's going to be exactly Renata Foss heading to the box, I believe, unless they're going well, the actually, other way around. Against Montreal here, excuse me. Yeah, I was with you as well. I thought that was Foss getting the gate for trip or a slash on that one, but it's the rookie Daou. So Toronto will get the early power play opportunity here as the Furies come in with the fourth ranked power play in the CWHL. They win the faceoff back to the point for fast. She stick handles, makes the pass to Sarah Nurse. Under pressure, that's coughed up, and here go Montreal shorthanded as that puck gets chipped in by Saulnier. And it'll give Greco some time to retrieve it from behind her own goal. Renata Fast carries it out for the Furies. Makes the pass to the near wing for Sarah Nurse. She blows by the defender, plays it behind the net. As Spooner picks it up, the Furies captain plays it back to the near point for Greco. Greco, far side, as fast controls, lets the shot fly. That one redirected to the far corner where Nurse gets on it for Toronto. She tries to shield it from the defensive effort of Saulnier. Nurse doing well to tie up and then Saulnier able to shoot it down the ice with a minute 10 left on the power play. Greco first on it, she'll leave it there as Nice play by Channel to make the far ice pass. Crosses it up and Howard chips it behind the goal where digging after it is Spooner. They play it on the back of the goal. Spooner gets it back. Howard tries to feed a backhander to the line. That gets broken up as she's pinned in the far corner with 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Toronto trying to get some clear puck possession here as Spooner into the scrum. They come away with it as McKenzie flips it back behind for Howard. Howard under pressure, shields it from the defender. Montreal trying to clear the zone. They get the puck to the line, but not out. Nice work by Darkangelo to come off the bench and keep it in play. Finally, Montreal cleared out. As shorthanded, bringing it up the ice is Desrochers. The Welland, Ontario native plays it into the far corner. And with just 10 seconds left on the power play, maybe time for one more rush for Toronto. As Emily Fulton carries it across center ice. Power play now over, Prevo flips it into the far side where Rougeau hammers it to the far boards, but it's kept in by Darkangelo. Rougeau gets it back, makes the pass to the four, back to Rougeau. They stay on side, good job to toe the line there as Hillary Knight tries to wrestle for the puck in the far corner. We had Lafort crashing hard into the end boards. There's a Great move by Sonia as she deked her way all the way in there and nearly tucked it past the goalkeeper, Tylee. What a great chance there for Montreal. Just amazing how she was able to create space out of seemingly nothing. That's the move that a lot of young players are practicing these days, going between the legs, using your body to shield your opponents while you create that space to the open side. And if she just had a little bit more time to get a backhand off, that really would have challenged Tylee. Poulin wins the faceoff. Pate comes in and takes possession. Tries to feed it back to the line. They play it down low. Daou back to Poulin. Shot right on. And Tylee makes the save as she does well with the positioning there. Yeah, fantastic draw pass from Daou. 
It's a very simple game plan. Get Poulain the puck. She's fantastic. She's the captain for a reason. And anytime you give her a chance in the slot, it's a dangerous opportunity. She just played her 50th career regular season game. She's amassed 88 points in 50 CWHL games. No question about it. Number 29, Marie-Philippe Poulain, arguably the most dangerous player on the ice here tonight. Emily Fulton brings the puck in for Toronto. Bad bounce off the boards. Back into center ice where Poulain scoops it up. Circles back and now she'll take it up the ice. Poulain stick handling. Drives wide. Tries to get past Dark Angelo. Along with Fast. Flask gloves it down and knocks it out through the neutral zone. Kara Lamard first on it for Montreal. Takes it all the way behind her goal. Ends up leaving it in the short corner. Dark Angelo digs it out front. Howard lets the shot fly. It's off a stick and into the meshing. Nice work there by Cheyenne D'Archangelo on the floor check. Yeah, dangerous opportunity for Toronto, but great defensive positioning from Montreal. Once that pass got to the slot, the stick check, and the stick was exactly where it needed to be, and that was never going to trouble Nashmeyer with a fantastic defensive stop like that. Sarah Nurse does well to win the faceoff. Spooner gets it back to the point. As Fideski tried to hold the line, Montreal retake possession, and here they come, led by Katia Clement Hedra. The man Hedra stops at the far side hash marks, plays it back to the point. Near side for Catherine Dawu, back to Rougeau. Rougeau tried to feed one into the far corner, but Nurse read that. And here comes Toronto as Mackenzie and Nurse streak up the ice. Spooner joins the rush late. It's fed behind the net where Spooner battles for it in the near corner. Natalie Spooner shielded, doing well there against Clement Hedra. It's out to center ice, and Toronto will have to skate back in their own zone to retrieve it as Julia Fideski. Ends up working hard, and they get the icing call there against the Canadian. Yeah, that's going to keep a very tired Montreal unit on the ice. Only four and a half minutes gone, Nico, but a very fast-paced game. Great chances for both teams, and this is exactly the kind of hockey you would expect to see Montreal and Toronto play facing off against each other. Jess Vela to take the draw for Toronto. Montreal trying to get a, line, a bit of a change here, and is Saulnier trying to sneak off the ice. They won't let that one stick, and... Now Amard in to take the face off. Puck is dropped, Toronto battling for possession. Julie Allen has it scooped away from her by Amard and now it's picked up by Saulnier, who had that great chance early for Montreal. Desrochers plays it right in front of the Montreal bench where they cautiously finally play it as they were careful not to get caught for too many skaters there. And now we are going to have a Montreal penalty called as holding the call, and it's coming against Sarah LeFour. I was surprised to see the Toronto bench so quiet with the puck in a few skates along the boards. To me, that looked like too many players on the ice. But as I mentioned, no complaints from Courtney Kessel, the head coach of the Furies. So if she's, not, if she's fine with it, I'm fine with it. She's also going to be fine with the fact that she's on the power play. Yeah, it worked out to her benefit regardless, but that's a good point. It is surprising that they didn't protest a little more. Regardless, Toronto back to the power play is Spooner. Tries to get some clear possession off the faceoff. Nothing doing. Good work by Rougeau as she chips it over to the far corner. Dawu tries to pin it up against the boards, battling against Nurse. Held in at the line by Fast, but now scooped up and cleared down the ice by Aaron Ambrose. Two early penalties, very uncharacteristic for Montreal. They rank second fewest in the league for time shorthanded. Just six minor penalties entering this game, already two within the first five minutes. They have yet to surrender a power play goal against this season. They've scored one shorthanded goal for. Something to watch with Montreal, and they're lucky maybe not to get called for a trip there as Toronto struggling to break out. Good work by Poulain on the shorthanded forecheck. Finally dumped into the zone by McNeil. Fast, who was rounded up in that scrum, heads to the bench. I think she's all right, but maybe a little more frustrated than anything as one minute already gone on the Toronto power play and they've hardly had the puck inside the Montreal zone. No, the Montreal penalty kill has just been fantastic, suppressing any kind of offense and what they do really well is they keep you out of the middle. Channel feeds it to the far side, Allen picks it up, she's got Howard with her, plays it back to the line for Channel. Fulton on the near point, plays it to Fulton. Tried to feed it back over, intended for Julie Allen. That's broken up. And now Bate springs Saulnier on a short-handed breakaway. Jill Saulnier shoots, and she misses the near side top corner with a great short-handed break. 28 seconds left in the Toronto power play. Nice work by Montreal as they dump the puck right in, and Tylee has to be sharp to make that one. 
Yeah, and Jill Sonia is not going to miss many of those, leading the way with seven points so far in just the opening days of the season, really. And yeah, fantastic effort, and Tylee had to be ready. Dumped in, it'll end up near side as Ambrose plays it forward. It's picked up by Fideski, but that'll do it for the Toronto power play. The only offense on that power play created by the shorthanded team Montreal with that break for Jill Solny. Here comes Toronto, Prevo skating to the puck, does well to catch up with it. Lays that one off to Zubak. She's under pressure from a couple of Montreal players. And here goes Kara Lemard for Le Canadien. She's got Lafour with her. Makes the pass to the near side for Clement Hedra, but it's offside against Le Canadien as Lafour was in, and Clement Hedra didn't see that. And she raised her arm as if she was asking, how could you possibly be outside? There was so much time, and <laughs> her lineman just got a little bit ahead of the blue line and was too far in to be able to recover in time. Uh, here we get another look at that short-handed breakaway for Salne, and she came oh so close to picking that top corner. Speaking of picking top corners, here goes Natalie Spooner. She streaks down the far wing, drives wide, cuts right in front with the centering pass, and Mashmeyer did well to cover down low as Spooner was trying to feed that in front for one of Nurse or McNeil. But nice work there by the Montreal goaltender. Yeah, Nurse just inserted herself inside the blue paint. She wasn't going to let anyone move her, had her stick on the ice. Fundamentally perfect, but Mashmeyer was there to keep the door closed. Sarah Nurse lines up to take the face off. She's got Spooner positioned at the top of the circle, but Montreal win it as McNeil doing some good forechecking, nearly came up with a turnover. Now Saulnier takes it away. She makes the pass to Lafour, runs out of space. Toronto regains possession as a delayed offside call against Montreal, and they'll whistle it down with 12.25 to go in the period. And aside from that Saulnier chance, not a ton of action so far for Shade Tiley, but when she has been tested, They've been fantastic high percentage scoring opportunities. And she's the kind of netminder that always keeps herself locked in. Concentration rarely breaks for Tylee. Ambrose takes possession for Montreal. She makes the pass to Taylor Willard as the rookie chips that one in. Foot race and it's an icing call against Le Canadien. Face off to come all the way back inside Montreal's zone. And I think Tylee really has an opportunity to grow in her own right into that conversation for best net miners in the league. Her NCAA resume is unprecedented. First team All-American, top 10 Patty Kazmaier finalist, and the most outstanding player at the Frozen Four. A two-time champion. Really, it's just a wait and see game at this point, see what she can do in the CWHL. Shot from the point, knocked down, bouncing puck into the far corner where Aaron Ambrose takes possession. She'll skate it out, tries to get past Sarah Nurse, loses her footing. Nice support there from the Canadian. Shot right on. Good blocker save by Tylee as Levine let that one fly from the hash marks. Toronto chip it out in front of the benches. Montreal take possession as Rougeau plays it to Willard. Willard skating back in her own zone. Plays it back to Rougeau. Taken as inside the zone they come. Fed to the near side. Poulin receives the pass from Bate. Poulin tries to circle out to the high slot, makes the pass to Dawu, back to Poulin, backhander, and that one goes wide of the near post. Great vision there between Dawu and Poulin to connect for that chance. Speeding up the ice, nice work by Prevo to beat out the icing call. As Montreal get it to the line, Renata fast hammers one, deflected in front by Prevo, and a good right pad save by Mashmeyer. Well, Toronto generating their best chance of the period right there. After Montreal had a beautiful sequence in play, Greco with possession tries to play it to Vela. Banks it forward and into the zone where Broll comes and crashes into Vela as Lafour takes possession. De Rocher flips that one up to center. Nice read by Fideski as she comes up and separates the player from the puck. Broll plays it around, intended for Bate, hops over her stick. Suzuki pinning up the player Salne against the boards, but it's Lafour who comes away with the puck. Nearly coughs it up there to Zubak. Nice forward checking by Darkangelo. She lets the shot fly, and a quick glove save there by Mashmeyer. And again, Cheyenne Darkangelo causing a turnover on the forecheck. Well, she had the right side of the net wide open. Mashmeyer just had to drop the glove, but two turnovers inside the slot right down the middle. That is not something that head coach Danny Brunet is going to be very happy with. you got to clean up those little areas of the game, especially against a shooter like Dark Angelo. Dark Angelo last year played with the Red Star team that made it to the Clarkson Cup final. And this year it was a big addition in the offseason for Toronto when she signed with the Furies. 
Uh, she's out there on the forecheck. Fulton tries to get Dark Angelo the puck. Fulton gets knocked down from behind, and that's going to be a penalty. I think it was Lefour who leveled her. Body contact the call, and for the second time this period, Sarah Lefour heading to the box. Surprised it's only body contact from the initial signal. It was actually the far side official that made the call. The official no more than three feet away seemed to be okay with the hit, but it was the official with the angle from across the ice, and I figured if you're going to make that call from that position, it would be because you're seeing the angle coming in from behind. Lafour may be lucky to escape with just a two-minute minor. Is still slow to her feet down there is Emily Fulton. Fulton, a vet on this Furies team, 76 career regular season games. She's been here through some of the tough times, and she's certainly well-respected within that room, and this would be a tough loss if she's unable to return to action, especially after losing Jordan Ham uh, Hampton just a couple weeks ago, last week, really, to that... Uh, I think it was an upper body arm injury that she sustained. Yeah, it was a right wrist injury, and yeah. she actually tweeted out an update for everyone. She was having so many people asking about how she was doing, and the tweet she says is, so much love from all you guys, so wanted to update you. Overall surgery went well. On one side, they put in a plate with five screws, and on the other piece of the brake, they put in two metal posts and wired them together because it was so close to the joint. She says she hopes to get back soon, and we certainly agree with her, but that sounds like a pretty significant injury. And as you mentioned, if Fulton's unable to return, all of a sudden the fears are down two key contributors. Well, Fulton's being helped to the bench here with the assistance of her teammates. The crowd here gives her a nice salute, but this does not look good for Courtney Kessel or the Toronto Furies as Emily Fulton will leave the game and we'll wait to see if she returns here tonight. And obviously you never want to speculate, but just from our vantage point, it looks like she's unable to put any amount of pressure on that right foot. So you never know if that's a lower leg or ankle or any of the sort, but just when you go into the boards as awkwardly as she did, it's never a pretty sight. And she's taking her time getting off the ice, supported by a pair of teammates and certainly some concern across the faces on the Toronto Furies bench. We'll take Fulton right to the Furies dressing room. As you mentioned, Adam, those plays against the boards, just the proximity, that kind of collision. It's not like there's intent to make a uh, play that could injure a player. It's just the percentage is, you know, when you put your back to the play like that, it's, it's uh, likely not going to end well in your favor. And we certainly hope that Emily Fulton returns soon, and we wish her all the best there. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on any updates that we can get throughout the game. But for now, Toronto has an opportunity. They have to try and shift their focus to the power play. 0 for 2 so far, and they haven't looked too dangerous. We'll see if they can change that here. Well, Sarah Nurse tries to make a dangerous play, but instead a player crashes into the net as that's Aaron Ambrose taking the net off the peg. So we'll restart with four seconds gone on the power play. And if there is anything remotely close to a silver lining when someone gets injured, it's the opportunity for the team to huddle around the bench and use it as an impromptu timeout. So we'll see what Courtney Kessel and staff were able, to, were able to draw up last stoppage. Spooner wins the draw as Nurse comes in to take it. Shoveled right on goal, but not much pressure there, and it's held by Mashmeyer. So we'll do it once more with another four seconds gone. As Spooner gets set to take the draw against Poulin. The two captains go head-to-head. -head. And Poulin gets the better this time. Ambrose rings it around the near boards. Daou tries to chip it past Greco, and she does so successfully. As Renata Fast has to skate quickly to beat Marie-Philette Poulin to that loose puck. Fast taking it behind her own goal. 1.35 left on the Furies' power play. Fast skating it into the zone, chips it ahead, wrestles the stick out of Ambrose's hands, and... Clement Hedra tries to flip that off the boards and out, but I think it hit the meshing, and we'll have a whistle, and the faceoff should stay inside the Montreal zone. Yeah, the far side official actually signaling for ah. high stick, so we'll probably get the faceoff just outside the bench in front of the Montreal Canadien as we have a player going down to just make sure the skates are all tied up. Carol Amard finishes the equipment check. We get back underway. Amard gets the puck but gives it away to Howard. Howard, toe drag, lets the shot fly. That's blocked. Howard regains possession as she plays it back to line for Channel. She hammers it down low, intended for Julie Allen. Nice work there as Catherine Daou, the rookie on the blue line for the Canadian with a veteran-esque play, taking her time and skying that one down the length of the ice. One minute remaining on the Toronto power play as the Furies bring it across center ice. Darkangelo fires it into the zone. 
around to the far side corner where Daryl Shea tries to chip it out. Julie Allen makes the play to the point, but Montreal aggressive there, and then an offside call against Toronto. Nice work by Clement Hedra at the blue line. And something to keep an eye on, early in the first period, Mary Philippe Poulain playing a lot of time on the penalty kill. It's a compliment to have your best player also playing the PK, but you also want to conserve those legs wherever you can. Montreal's done very well with short shifts, but we'll have to certainly monitor her ice time throughout the game. Well, that's certainly a discussion with the other team in Toronto, is do you put some of the players on the PK and how you use the ice time? And so far here, head coach Danny Brunet opting to put one of his top players on the PK, but you're right, Adam. Fatigue could become a factor later on. We'll have to monitor here as the game goes on. 20 seconds left on the Toronto power play. Fast, feathers it in front. Nurse tries to knock it down. Nurse has it at the far side, hash marks. Plays it down low. As behind the goal, McNeil tries to jam it home. And with Spooner right there, it'll be held by Mashmeyer. Well, Mashmeyer is still proving to be a brick wall in net, but I would argue that this has been Toronto's best power play of the three early in the first period. mashmire has been tested a few times and really where the greatest quality scoring chances are coming from are turnovers in the defensive end. So Montreal just really has to whack it out, not get too fancy with it and keep it away from the center of the ice. Sarah Nurse lining up on the draw. She's escorted out. So Spooner comes in to take the face off. As she tries to draw it back. Battling for possession. Neither team can get it clear. Now Poulin flips it off the glass and down the ice, and that'll do it for the Toronto power play. The Furies now 0 for 3 with the power play here in the first period. Toronto moves the puck into the Montreal zone quickly. Le Canadien play it back out to center ice. McNeil chips it in for Toronto as Sophie Bro knocks it down. Bro plays it near side as Le Canadien skated out. Sarah Lafour brings it across center ice. She's held up by Julie Allen. Willard hammers it in and It'll be picked up in the far corner by Sena Suzuki. Hillary Knight chips in to make the check there against Suzuki. It's flipped to the near side where Fideski tries to fire it ahead. Julie Allen nearly receives that chip pass, but it's picked off. And here goes one of the best players on the planet, Hillary Knight. But she's defended well that time by Carolyn Prevo. Zubak brings it into the zone. Nothing doing there as Brohl read the deke perfectly and pokes it away as Montreal take it out with 7-10 remaining here in the first period. Scoreless so far between the Toronto Furies and Le Canadien Montreal as you're watching CWHL Live. Montreal cycling out of their own zone. Bro plays it ahead as Levine takes it into the Toronto zone. Levine stops on a dime. It's poked away from her by Dark Angelo. She makes the pass over to Howard. Howard tees up the slapper. Big shot, big save as Mashmeyer got just enough to deflect it into the corner. Bannon takes it up for Montreal, a rare shift for the rookie as she tries to pin it in against the boards. It's shot out to center ice as Rougeau takes possession for Montreal. Battling for possession, Toronto come up with it, led by Channel. She tries to make a tape-to-tape -tape pass to Spooner. Puck off her stick, and here goes Montreal again, led by Jelena. She was ready to peel off for a change, lost her footing, and that'll give Toronto some time to break out. Dark Angelo makes the pass to Nurse. Nurse brings it into the zone, takes the shot. She was trying to pick the blocker side top corner, and Mashmeyer just got enough of that to make the save. Dau plays it back behind her own goal for Willard. Stretch pass for Bate. She chips that one ahead to Poulin. Poulin with a lane to split the D, opts to make the pass. Shot by Daou, and it goes wide of the near post. McNeil battling for it, kept in. Nice work there by Poulin to hold the zone. Bate hustling after the puck, gets to it ahead of Greco. Greco out muscles her and kicks it around to the far hash marks. Daou holds it in, dances around Spooner, plays it back out. Poulin lets the shot fly, and that's over top the net as she was parked in the high slot. Willard's shot from the near boards also steered wide. Ambrose keeps it in, 5.15 left in the period. Bate takes it, down low, Willard at the top, plays it over to Daou, far side. Montreal operating like they're on a power play here, but it's five on five, as Bate does well to hold the puck in. Montreal will get some line changes, Toronto unable to yet, as coming off the bench, Daryl Shea able to hold it in the zone as Willard does a good job at the blue line. 
the Manhedra wrestling for the puck. Prevo in there, McNeil, and now Fast comes away with it for Toronto. Spooner receives the bank pass. She'll chip it ahead, but on the wrong side of center ice, not enough for icing. Good work there by Spooner to feather it in. Well, the most important thing there for Toronto was getting a line change. There were some heavy, heavy legs on the ice. Montreal really turning it up in these past few minutes. Brittany Howard takes possession, centers in front, and Dark Angelo just missed on the one-timer. Nice chemistry forming here between Howard and Dark Angelo as Montreal take the puck out of their own zone, led by Clement Hedra. She makes a pass to the near side for Desrochet. Stops on a dime. Nice job to see Saulnier off the bench. Toe drag, and that just got poked away by Suzuki. And then it's fired into the stands. That should be a delay, a game penalty against Toronto. And it should be Montreal going to the power play for the first time. And indeed, that is the call as Brittany Howard gets ushered to the box. I'm still trying to decide, Nico, what I was more impressed with there. The vision to put the puck into open space or the toe drag from Sonia. Just a fantastic effort on goal. And Howard, that's a tough penalty to take. You want to get the puck out of the ice, but you also don't want to sit. She's been a fantastic addition to this team. You want to talk about standout rookies. Brittany Howard, the St. Thomas, Ontario native, certainly been one of them so far for Toronto. Montreal win the faceoff back to the point as Melody Daou plays it to marie Philippe Poulin. Erin Ambrose receives the pass. Plays that one to the far side for Knight. She tries to snap one quickly. Got deflected and then knocked away by the blocker. Poulin takes it into the high slot. Passes it over to Knight at the far circles. Minute 35 left. Knight hammers one. That's deflected off the end boards. Battling for the loose puck. Bate comes in, scoops it back to Daou. Daou stepping off the half wall. Nice pass over to Knight. Knight centers it back in front. That's knocked away by Allen, but kept in by Daou. Daou over to Knight. Knight snaps one quickly, but the five hole covered by Ty Lee. Toronto still unable to clear the zone. Montreal holding pressure in with a minute 10 left on the power play. Knight digs it out of the scrum, plays it back to Daou. Near side intended for Poulin, but it's across the blue line, and Montreal will regroup as Toronto try rush a couple of line changes in. Daou receives the pass from Poulin. Poulin gets it right back as she's at the top of the blue line. Skates in, makes the pass off, and now the two will peel off for changes. Ambrose with the puck, 45 seconds left on the Montreal power play. Lafour receives it from Ambrose, back to Ambrose. There's the one-timer, that's over top of the net. Bouncing puck, controlled. And I think we got a high stick here. We'll have a face-off. It looks like it'll stay inside the Toronto zone. Yeah, the actually, the net came off its pegs there. That's exactly what it was. And that's the third time we've actually seen the net come off the moorings earlier. It just took a small nudge from Tylee to knock it out of position. And luckily, it wasn't a factor down play. But that's the third whistle for having the net off its moorings. 30 seconds left on the Montreal power play as Willard keeps it in at the far line. Sarah Nurse pressuring her nearly gets the puck back. But now it's Solny. And Clement Hedra working the far corner as they're pinned up by Nurse and Channel. Salne back to the point for Rougeau. Salne lost her footing behind the goal. And once again, nets off net. its moorings yeah. and the faceoff's going to come outside the zone as that was Sonia who went in and just knocked it off the pegs. So maybe we'll have to get a drill out there or something in your mission and really clean up those peg holes. It's been a problem the last few seasons here for sure. As we've got 10 seconds left on the Montreal power play and just 2.13 remaining in the first period of play. Saulnier plays it to the near side for Rougeau. Howard gets set to rejoin the action in three seconds as they battle in front of the penalty boxes. Howard back on the ice. Montreal unable to do anything with their first power play despite some good puck pressure in the offensive zone. Digging away for it directly in front of us as Sarah Nurse, Melissa Channel, Katia Clement-Hedra. Couple other jerseys in there as well. Sarah LaFord digging away for it. The referees want them to play it loose. As it's a bit of a rugby scrum pinned up against the boards, they're just inching it forward and then inching it back. Here comes LaFord with the puck out of the scrum. Nice work by Howard to tie a purse stick as those two continue to battle hard. Rougeau receives the pass, a minute 20 left in the period. Clement Hedra brings it into the zone, tries to drive wide around Fideski. Fideski does well to force her behind the goal, and now Fideski comes away with the puck. 
Deshanae flips it over to Ambrose. Deshanae gets it back, tries to toe drive. Big rebound off the shot in the far. Uh, there's a wraparound chance as Deshanae nearly tucks it in after Carol Amard left it behind the net there for Kim Deshanae. Great shift there from the veteran. As she had a couple of good chances. Here we get another look at that wraparound chance, which, oh, I can't believe she couldn't tuck that one home. Great chance for Kim Deshanae. As it looked like she had Shea Tiley beat, but nothing doing. 53 seconds left here in the period. Dawu keeps it in at the point. Levine, she gets knocked down, and here goes Sarah Nurse. She's got Spooner with her. Nurse drives wide. Shields it, centers back in front. There's the shot right on by Suzuki and a good save by Mashmeyer. Great setup by Sarah Nurse as she checks the clock. 30 seconds remaining here in the first period. Deshanae can't hold it. Suzuki tries to dump it in. Dawu gloves it down as they battle for possession. Comes out to Ambrose. She feeds that one over to Bate, but that's coughed up by Fideski. As with just 15 seconds remaining in the period, they try pin it up against the boards. Allen digging away for it. Coming off the bench, Howard nearly creates the turnover for Vela. Two seconds left as Aaron Ambrose will just stick handle out the clock. The buzzer sounds and that'll do it for the first period of play, an exciting first period of play with great chances for both teams. As we get a look at this last great chance for the Fury set up by Sarah Nurse. Senna Suzuki lets the shot fly, but Mashmeyer coming up with another big save as both teams registering seven shots on goal. And the teams will head to the locker rooms all tied up at one. Well, a reminder to connect with the CWHL and other fans by following at the CWHL on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Tweet us at the CWHL, and we'll get to some Twitter shoutouts later on in the broadcast. That's the first period of play. The Toronto Furies and Le Canadien de Montréal are all tied up 0-0 after 20 minutes of play. And with 20 minutes in the books and the team scoreless, we'll step aside for an intermission break. Second period coming up, you're watching the CWHL Live. than you think. Scotiabank.
No score after 20 minutes of play here at the MasterCard Center for Hockey Excellence. Joined by the Furious captain, Natalie Spooner. A very tough back and forth first period, but how does the special teams constantly being on the ice affect the way the game goes in the first 20 minutes? Yeah, I mean, I think we had some good chances on the power play. It would have been nice to capitalize on one of those and, and get ahead early, but um, I think it gave us a bit of momentum and we're getting pucks behind their D and getting some chances, so I think we have to keep doing that. Every time Montreal comes to play or you go to Montreal, it has to just get the energy pumping that much more. How does it change when you have an opponent with so many players you're familiar with, so many players that you can really game plan for, like at the back of your hand, how does it change the way you approach the game? Yeah, I mean, I think they have a great team and a lot of really skilled players, but I think they're the games we, excite, we get excited to play. I mean, you always want to play against the best, and to be able to go out there and play against Poulet and Sonia and Knight, I mean, you're, we're comparing ourselves to them and, and trying to battle and be better than them out there. So I think at the end of the day, the, the player who has a top top line who's better is probably going to win the game. And finally, Tylee and Mashmeyer both have been fantastic. What's it going to take to crack this shutout? Yeah, I mean, I think we got to get more bodies in front of the net and just get those rebounds. She's laying a few ones out there for us, and we've got some close chances, but I think in the second period, we got to really dig deep and, and get pucks in the net. And we saw Fulton go down. Have you, ever, have you been able to see her or talk to her, know if she's going to be able to come back today? I haven't seen her yet. Um, I think she's with the trainer still, so I'm not too sure. Yeah, we'll keep an eye. Natalie, thanks yeah. very much for your time. Thank you. That's Natalie Spooner, captain of the Toronto Furies. We'll be right back here on CWHL Live. Like people, businesses have their journey, their path, sometimes straight, but more often evolving, growing, and adapting. And like people, businesses' needs change, creating the need for knowledge in areas like accounting, consulting, and tax, areas critical to your continued growth and success, all part of the journey and all part of what we do together with you so that when your business has arrived, it's ready to keep going. MNP, wherever business takes you. able to get a skate on it. Not enough to retain possession though. Victoria back now, makes a nice move to the center of the ice. Victoria Bach, toe drags, Victoria Bach, backhand, and she scores. Welcome to the CWHL, Victoria Bach. And the Thunder on the board for the first time in 2018-19. There to clean up the mess in front was Fortino, and here comes Jones out of the box. Jessica Jones, backhand, and she scores out of the box, into the back of the net, 2-0 Thunder on a beautiful finish from Jess Jones. As Anderson skates it in. And something I noticed from the practice on Thursday is Laura Stacy is in it alone. Laura Stacy backhand scores! Laura Stacy sets up the second and scores the third herself and the Thunder are up by three. And once again, Laura Stacy being a huge impact player for the Thunder, scoring an absolute beauty of a goal there. She has a, a goal and assist tonight's game here. We see her again, just beating Brown to the puck there and going in all alone and makes a wonderful move to the backhand again and beats. Then forces the turnover. 
Back off the boards, picked up by Fortino. Shot on goal. Rebound, and she scores! Ailish Forfar with an absolute missile. And the Thunder are up by four. What a beautiful goal there by 4-4. And all smiles as she heads back to the bench here with we her have first it. career goal. That's it. Beautiful shot on the net by Fortino there, who leaves a re juicy rebound for 4 4, who just pots it on an open net there, top shelf. And Markham wins that face off. Stacy again goes back door, cross ice pass, and it's finished off by Jones, her second of the night. And the Thunder continue to pile on the blades. A fantastic night all over the ice for the Markham Thunder there. Up tic tac nothing. toe. Unbelievable play by Fortino there. Good heads up play by Laura Stacy. It's almost as if they practiced this before. I'm so amazed at how well that went as Jess Jones pots her second of the game and uh, Laura Stacy gets her third point with one goal and two assists. Just a pair of shots registered on goal. A quiet night for Howe as Markham gets another shot. Rebound into the back of the net, Nicole Brown. And poor Lauren Dom has been left on an island. But Brown, another heads up play, gets the rebound and deposits it to the back of the net. King gets it back, she centers it. Worcester sends it into the corner. And that will do it. The Markham Thunder dominate the home opener, six to nothing the final, as they beat the Worcester Blades. than you think. Scotiabank. All right, hockey fans, welcome back to the MasterCard Center in Toronto, Ontario, as we get you set for the second period of action on CWHL Live. I'm Nico Cardarelli, joined by Adam Jenkins. A good opening 20 minutes, which was tightly contested. Both teams firing seven shots on goal apiece, but Goose Egg still up there on the scoreboard, 0-0 after 20 minutes of play. 
Yeah, it's about as entertaining and as close as you can get without any goals in the first period. We had a bit of everything. We had some penalties from both ends, some high percentage scoring chances, and a lot of athletes showing off their tremendous skill. Jill Sonia with a few fantastic opportunities using her stick handling skills, which are nearly unmatched in the CWHL. Murphy Philippe Poulin playing a lot of time both on the penalty kill and starting things off on uh, when it was even strength and some back and forth action and some stellar net minding from both Shay Tiley and Mashmeyer. Well, the Furies come out to the roar of the home crowd. Montreal hits the ice as well. Still no number 17. Emily Fulton has not returned here for the second period of play for the Toronto Furies. We'll keep an eye on her and provide you any update if we can. Yeah, and it's such a big blow for the Furies. Speed, smart, skills. She really is a complete package, Emily Fulton. And I mean, she really brings a lot to this team. She's not necessarily the one who's going to get you on the board more times than not, but she does the little things right. She knows how to get to the corner, and unfortunately, that's what caused the injuries was going into the dirty areas to try and win some puck battles. But playing shorthanded is never easy, uh, especially when you're already down a player like Jordan Hampton as well. So Furies are already getting bruised up in the opening stages of this period. Now it's up to her teammates, though, to rally around and, and play for her. A reminder to get social with the CWHL. Follow at the CWHL on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook and join the discussion today. Second period of play underway as Montreal defends the end to our right as Poulin brings the puck to Daou. Daou tries to chip it in. Poulin gets it back. She flips it over to Bate. Bate back near side to Daou as she shields it in the corner, plays it behind the goal. And Toronto will try cleared out, held in at the line by Willard. She hammers it down to and sophie Bate, who feeds it out to oh, Marie Foulet Poulin, who got a nice little toe drag around Spooner, but then Nurse came in to take the puck away from Poulin. Nurse hammers it up the ice, controlled by McNeil. It rolls off her stick, and it's picked up by Willard. Daou receives the pass. She'll flip it in. Montreal goes for wholesale changes as Greco takes possession for Toronto. Greco flips it up the ice. Nobody there at all in a blue jersey. That'll be an icing call against Toronto just 53 seconds into the period. Not a lot of things to address from the first period for either coaching staff. I think the main message is just stay out of the penalty box. Both teams very strong, five on five, and you, anytime you want to you don't want to give the other team any opportunity you can to score. So taking as many minor penalties as there were in the first period, certainly some adjustments on the discipline end. The four did well to win the draw for Montreal. She had Hillary Knight parked at the top of the circle, but the puck gets past Knight, and now they battle for it at center ice as Knight has it picked off by Spooner. Spooner brings it into the zone for the Furies, tries to put one on goal. That's knocked down by Broll, and now here comes Montreal as Knight plays it to the near side for the four. Saulnier heading to the net, pass right to Knight. Centered by Saulnier from down low behind the goal line. It's knocked away by Ty Lee. Kept in at the line by Desrochet. Fed out in front to Saulnier. The backhander flipped on goal. And a glove save there by Shea Tiley. As she continues to be in a perfect position to make those stops for the Furies. And it was the right place at the right time. I think there was just a little bit more patience to be desired on that play. You didn't have to get the shot on goal. Especially when the angle was as tough as it was. Look to the slot and try and keep that play alive. There's a shot by... Deschene, which goes wide of the near post. Rougeau, uh, Rougeau hammers it down low, where Channel plays around the far boards. Dark Angelo can't get it away from Catherine Daou as she tries to flip it out front, shoveled towards the goal. It's sitting there in the blue paint. Deschene comes in. She can't get a shot on. It's finally covered up by Tylee as Montreal had all sorts of goal mouth pressure, but they never could generate a clean shot. Yeah, and great job from Tyler to get low, keep her head moving, try and locate that puck, and once you saw it squirt free into the slot, quick to pounce on it and get the whistle. It was Kim Deschenay and Carol Emard providing the goal mouth presence for Montreal as they'll send out their top line of Daou, Poulain, and Bate. Prevot on the faceoff for Toronto. She wins it into the corner. Broll plays it behind the net for Bate. She's got Poulain out front shot. The one-timer goes wide of the post. Daou scoops it up. Far side hash marks back to the point for Daryl Shea. Near side to Broll. She lets the shot fly. And that was a dipping shot and a good reaction by Tilly to kick out the left pad and make the stop. There's the shot from the point. That one gets knocked down and picked up by 
fast, but she can't clear the zone. She gets it back for Toronto, tries to chip it off the boards, but the pressure from Marie Foulet Poulin keeps the puck in. Centered in front, finally hammered out by Greco, but kept in at the line by Poulin. Nice work by Montreal to hold the zone. Renata Fast tries to flip it out. Finally, Toronto get it down the length of the ice as Zubak gives chase there against Desrochers. Desrochers moves the stick of Zubak, then she gets tripped up. No call, play continues on. As Toronto flip it up the ice, that should be an icing call. No, nope, nothing doing as Nurse did well to hustle and negate the call as Desrochers takes it for Montreal. Pass ahead to LaFour. She's got Saulnier towing the line. Draw pass to Hillary Knight. She tees up a beauty, and that one goes over top the net. You can't give that kind of time and space to Hillary Knight. She had a clear lane to the net. Gets it back. Knight just can't receive that pass. It's a little bit ahead. Tries to center it in front to LaFour. Bouncing puck back across the line past Willard and inside the Montreal zone. Well, that slap shot from Hillary Knight was up and over the bar in a blink of an eye, and that's a situation where Tylee just has to hope she has great positioning because, as you mentioned, that's not the person you want to leave all alone in the slot. Tylee did well to challenge the shooter there. You can see her pushing out as Channel receives the pass at the point. That gets blocked by Knight, and now a foot race between the two 21s as Toronto's get there first. Nice work by Megan Quinn, the rookie defender. Jill Saulnier shields the puck, tries to play it ahead to Amard. That one's scooped up by Howard as she feeds it intended for Dark Angelo out of her reach as Willard gets onto it first for Montreal. Passes it ahead out to center ice. Suzuki tries to backhand it back in. Levine takes it inside the Toronto zone. Levine checking her options, feeds it into the near corner. Jelena leaves it for the four. Back out front as the one-timer from Levine just went wide and here goes Toronto with numbers in transition. Darkangelo makes the pass to Howard. They've got Suzuki joining the rush. She receives the pass, lets the shot fly, and a good glove save there from Mashmeyer on that shot from the outside. And that rush begins because Montreal tried to sneak that line change in a bit too early. You had the sixth skater come onto the ice and realize they had to wait or else they'd take a penalty for too many players on the ice. And that's where you give Toronto just that little bit of space and they absolutely exploit it with their fantastic speed up ice. Carolyn Prevo wins the face-off, back to the point. Senna Suzuki lets the shot go. Prevo knocks it down, puck sitting there. Good poke check by Mashmeyer, and here goes Montreal in transition. Deschenay flips it into the zone. Amard chasing it down. Suzuki gets to it first as she leaves it there for Fideski. Clemenhedra lost her footing, crashed into the net, but she's now out of there. Delayed offside against Montreal as Rougeau dumps it in. Suzuki hammers it to the near corner. Julie Allen gets to it first. She plays it back behind the net for Fideski. Zubak receives the pass. She tries to bank one off the boards intended for Prevo, who now peels off for a line change. And here goes Lorianne Rougeau for Montreal. Nice pass there to Amard. She takes it to the near corner. Centered in front for Clement Adra. She danced her way in front, got tackled. And the Montreal fans in the building can't believe there's no call there as Clement Hedro was wrestled down to the ice. Sarah Nurse brings it in, a couple of defenders on her back. She tries to take it behind the goal, but ends up losing possession as Dau takes it away. And Sophie Bate skating hard, brings it into the zone. She's chased down by Spooner. Shot right on, easily steered aside by Tylee. Bate centers in front, off the skate of Dau right on goal, and Tylee holds that one for the faceoff with 14-11 left in the second. Well, I think you said it perfectly. It was a tackle from Brittany Zubak. I'm also stunned, really, that that wasn't blown dead. I, it appears there's been a conscious decision from the officials to put the whistles away a little bit after that opening period where there were minor penalties plenty. But, yeah, I think Zubak certainly got away with one in the slot there. Especially on the tight proximity to the net. Looked like Clement Hader was dancing her way in for a goal-scoring opportunity. When you have that kind of offensive chance taken away, you almost anticipate the call, but... Tough break for Clement Hadra and Montreal as we're still scoreless. Nice puck movement as they center it back, intended for Dawu. Willard in from the point, feeds it down low. All the way to the near side hash marks where it's picked up by Aaron Ambrose. Plays it back for Bate. She tries to feather it out front. That's knocked down. Bate gets it back. Back to the point for Dawu. She tries to sidestep the check of McNeil. Endures a couple of hacks there from Spooner. Nice work by Bate. She, or Ambrose as she tried to pick out Bate in the high slot. Montreal keeping the pressure on here with their top unit. 
McNeil comes in and takes the loose puck for Toronto, flips it to the near side. Ambrose does well to hold it in the zone. Nurse picks it up for the Furies with 13.20 to go in the second period. Still scoreless here between Montreal and Toronto. Spooner does well to take the puck into the zone. Shielding it there from Broll, lays it back to Vela. Vela tries to hammer one on goal, that's knocked down. McNeil leaves it for Vela, she takes it behind the goal, near side. She's got Quinn at the point, plays it back to the defender. Over to the far side for Channel. She settles down the rolling puck. Her shot gets blocked by Hillary Knight, and here goes Jill Saulnier off to the races. Two defenders crossing back. Nice work by Saulnier as she tried to put it through her own legs to throw off the defenders. Now back to the point for Broll. Her shot knocked down by the skates of a Toronto defender. Sitting there, picked up. What a chance, what a save by Tylee. Oh my goodness, robbing Saulnier of that opportunity. Broll gets it back to Saulnier. Her shot gets knocked down by Channel. Knight plays it back to the point. Daryl Shea over to Saulnier. Montreal, all sorts of pressure here. Daryl Shea plays it off to Sophie Broll. The defender down low at the goal line, back to the point for Daryl Shea. She tees up a big shot. That's blocked by Brittany Howard, and here goes Howard. A breakaway opportunity as Daryl Shea chases her down, takes her down, and that's going to be a penalty. As we wait to see if it's anything more, Saulnier or Daryl Shea pleading her case, Howard crashing hard into the end boards. Still no signal from the official if it's anything more than a penalty. I think they're gonna discuss this here as we get another look at the replay. Brittany Howard had a bit of separation and I believe that's the discussion here between the officials. Still no signal on the ice and I think it's just gonna be a tripping call as we've got Daryl Shea in the box now so just a two-minute minor, and Daryl Shea may be lucky that it wasn't a penalty shot called against Montreal. Yeah, I was with the same perspective of you, Nico, as it looked like Howard had plenty of space in front of her. To me, that's a clear breakaway, but I think almost more importantly for the Furies is that Howard was able to get up back to her own feet and hobble off the ice. Scary play when you go feet first into the boards. Obviously, we saw what happened to Fulton, so a, uh, a bullet dodge for Toronto, no doubt about it. Yeah, they can ill afford to lose any more bodies to injury as Montreal killing a penalty for the fourth time here today. Although they've created some good shorthanded chances and they get the puck back here shorthanded. Nice work by Daou to play it back to Ambrose. Rougeau feeds it all the way up the ice. Spooner tries to knock it down as Greco takes possession. A minute 30 remaining on the Toronto power play as Renata Fast carries it out for the Furies. Fast brings it into the zone, she's got McNeil with her. Pinned up against the near boards where Saulnier comes away with it for Montreal. Saulnier under pressure by McNeil, feeds it to the far corner for Ambrose. Ambrose hammers it down the length of the ice with 105 left on the power play. Tylee leaves it for Fast. As she'll Get recomposed here and lead the breakout on the power play. Makes the bank pass to Spooner. She hammers it into the zone. Over to the far corner where Julie Allen and Brittany Howard dig away for the puck. It's Clement Hedra coming away with it. Dark Angelo feeds it back down low to Howard. Back to Dark Angelo. Behind the net to Howard. The two of them stay in close proximity as Howard gives it off to Dark Angelo. Cycling around to the near side at the point, kept in by Quinn, plays it to the far side for Channel. There's the one-timer redirected and a big save by Mashmeyer as Howard provided the screen, the shot from Dark Angelo, and a clutch save with 24 seconds left on the power play. Well, Howard provided the screen, but she also provided a late tip. Mashmeyer had to be quick and really trust her positioning because not only was Howard blocking her vision, she also got a stick on the puck and redirected it into the right pad. So another fantastic opportunity for Howard. She's been a huge spark plug for the Furies. The four wins the face off, but Toronto take possession. 20 seconds remaining with the power play. Howard back to the point for Quinn. Quinn far side for Channel. She's got Howard on the near side, puts it towards the goal. That's knocked down by Rougeau as she seems to be stung a little bit after making that block shot. Montreal control it, Aaron Ambrose hammers it off the boards and down the ice. And that'll do it for the Montreal penalty. Toronto 0 for 4 with the power play here this evening as we approach the midway mark of the game. Toronto bringing the puck back into the zone led by Sarah Nurse. She coughs that one up and here goes Hillary Knight for Le Canadien. 
Hillary Knight stops, chips it towards the goal as she had Saulnier racing there. That one's knocked away by Tylee, and here goes Sarah Nurse for the Furies. She's got Prevo with her. Nurse driving wide, takes the sharp angle shot, didn't find the net with it, and it comes all the way outside into the Toronto zone where it's picked up by Dau. Dau shielding it there from a couple of defenders. Suzuki hammers it to the far corner. Knight will pick it up for Montreal. Knight shielded well there by Fideski. Good work there by the rookie D as she comes away with the puck, chipping it up to center ice where McNeil takes it. Mackenzie McNeil tries to dance her way around Dau. But Poulin there with the extra defensive support and Montreal take the puck out of their zone. Bate across the blue line, drops it for Rougeau. Back to Bate, tried to center it out front. Bate gets it right back. Nice work there on the forecheck by the former MVP. Desrochers keeps it in at the far blue line as she hammers it into the corner for Bate. 8.45 left in the period, shipped out front. Intended for Poulin, but a foot race ensues and Nice work by Julie Allen to get to it ahead of Sophie Broll. Daryl Shea flips it over to Poulin. Poulin does well to earn some space and now she's got room to make the pass up the ice to Deschanay. Deschanay all over the back of Renata Fast. The two go into the near corner as they pin up against the boards and finally they'll whistle it down, a quick whistle there with 8.17 left in the period. And finally an opportunity for everyone to just sit back and take a deep breath. Back and forth action on both sides of the ice. Transition game of plenty. And I think it fits the style of both these teams. They know they're fast. They know they have the hands to create space. But just a relentless start to the second period. Already over the midway mark of the game. Ambrose hammers it down low. Tried to feather out front. Deschanay hammers away at it. Nothing doing for Montreal. And here comes Spooner for the Furies. Spooner shielding it there from Clement Hedra. They go into the near corner. Spooner shields the contact as she braces for that collision. Willard comes away with the puck for Montreal. Fans on the first clearing attempt. Shovels it out front. Mashmeyer had to be aware, and she was with the paddle. And then Hedra tried to pick out Amard. There's the shot right on. Oh, what a beauty! The former Fury, Aaron Ambrose, breaks the shutout as she plays some three-bar, ringing it off the bars and putting it past the goalie. It's 1-0 Montreal on this beautiful goal by Aaron Ambrose. Not a thing Shay Tiley can do, just a perfectly placed wrist shot. And that's a way to break out and get your first goal this season. She came into the game with four assists, but reminding the CWHL that she can shoot the puck too. An absolute laser. And the Canadian opened the scoring. A fantastic, fantastic shot there from Aaron Ambrose. Ambrose gets the goal. Toronto trying to answer right back as that clapper by Howard into the glove hand of Mashmeyer. Yeah, and Mashmeyer had to be ready for that one. Brittany Howard gets the puck off her stick in a hurry, and she can place the puck exceptionally well. Not the fastest lap shot you'll see in the league, but certainly one of the most accurate. Well, we had a replay look at that beautiful goal by Ambrose. She rings off the left post, the crossbar, and the right post before it finally trickles in. What a beauty. Montreal trying to double their lead as that shot Blockered away by Tylee. Off the shin pad of Howard into the Montreal zone. Rougeau drives wide the wrong way, but Dau there to cover her. Otherwise, Howard would have been clear in on goal. Howard stops it in the far corner, shields it from the defender, plays it back to the line where Channel does well to hold the zone. Here's the goal announcement. As Clement Hedra drawing the lone assist on the goal by Ambrose. As Adam mentioned, Ambrose gets her first of the season and give her now 29 career points. As Ambrose holds it for Montreal, plays it ahead to Saulnier. Lafour brings it into the zone. Tries the return pass to Saulnier. As she digs it out front, that one's picked off by Toronto, cleared to the line. And now a break here for Brittany Zubak. Zubak being chased down by Saulnier, lifts the stick. Beautiful defense there by Aaron Ambrose and Jill Saulnier as they played that perfectly. Zubak gets it back, tries the wraparound. Good save there by Mashmeyer as she had the pad pinned down against the post. Suzuki keeps it in only for a moment as here goes Broll. She makes the pass to Saulnier, still has Broll with her. Saulnier dips it off to Hillary Knight, her shot off a defender and into the far corner as Montreal gets some line changes there. Puck comes out to center ice where it's hammered back in by Broll. 
Knocked down by Daou. Tries to drop it off for Rougeau, wrong side of the blue line, as they'll try start back up. Poulen brings it in, drops it off to Daou. She tries to get it back to Poulen down low. Nurse trips up Poulen, no call there. Good work by Nurse to get it to the line, but held in by Melody Daou. She plays it off to Lorianne Rougeau. There's the one-timer attempt as Daou let it fly off the pass from Poulen. Rougeau back behind the net for Bete. Bete trying to feather it out front. Wow, what a chance for Marie-Philippe Poulen showing off her baseball skills there, batting that one out of midair and nearly would have had a highlight goal if that had gone in. What a chance. Montreal applying all sorts of pressure with 5-10 remaining here in the period. Great work by Poulen to hold the zone. Bate hustling after the puck, gets to it in the far corner. Plays it down low for Daou. Daou back to the point for Willard. Willard thinking about the shot, lets it fly. That's knocked down by Allen. And here's a break for Toronto. Sarah Nurse has McNeil with her. Nurse thinking shot, lets it fly. And a big blocker save there by Mashmeyer. As Nurse at the end of a shift just had enough gas to let it go. Montreal bring it right back in. That's a couple of times now in this period though, Adam, where they've been caught on that transition attack. Here comes Toronto again. Hammering it into the zone. As they battle for it in the near corner, it's De Rocher who comes up, or check that. Yeah, that was De Rocher for Montreal as Clement Hadra now takes it away. Controlled by Fast as she plays it to the far side. Brought in by Howard. Clement Hedra loses her footing. Dark Angelo chipping away for it. Willard comes out of the scrum with a puck, plays it behind her own net to De Rocher, under pressure from Howard. Four minutes even remaining in the second period. Montreal now leading one to nothing. Quinn makes a good play to keep it on the pressure, but the line change causes an offside call against the Furies. That's exactly what it was, Nico Shine, Dark Angelo just going off the ice entering from the wrong side of the blue line on that four check and just continue to be impressed by Brittany Howard. Speaking of four check, she's been dominant on all sides of the ice, really making the Montreal defenders question their positioning and you always have to keep your head on a swivel, but especially when Brittany Howard's on the ice. Look at that last chance on the two on one break for Toronto as Sarah Nurse lets the shot fly and a good blocker save by Mashmeyer. Dawu picks it up out of her own corner, plays it ahead to the four. Knight brings it into the zone. She's got Saulnier with her. Chips it ahead to Saulnier. Tries to settle the rolling puck down as she's wrestling against Nurse. Takes the stick right out of Nurse's hands. No call as Rougeau plays it to the floor. Centered in front to Knight. She lets the shot go. Lots of blue jerseys in front. Tylee gets the glove on it. Where's the puck? They try dig it past the Toronto goaltender, but what a great work there by the Toronto defense and Tylee. That's what we had all five blue jerseys down below the hash marks there. Yeah, very chaotic inside that home plate area and Tylee just had to hope and pray that she can keep an eye on it. Your defenders in front of you do a fantastic job to keep pucks away, but that can also work against you if you can't see the puck. And we saw that there from Tylee swatting the puck down in the midair and finally able to cover it up. But Montreal really applying the pressure after that opening goal. Poulin lets the shot fly after the faceoff win. It just went wide of the near post. Poulin gets it back down as she plays it behind the net for Bate. Bate steps out from the far corner back to the point. Nice work by De Rocher to hold the zone, but just as quickly Fideski flips it out. Zubak, she's got Prevo towing the line. They lose possession as Bate flips it ahead intended for Dawu. Foot race between Suzuki and Dawu as Suzuki gets to the puck first. Allen tries to chip it off the board. She gets it ahead for Carolyn Prevo. She's got Zubak with her. Prevo lets the shot fly. Big rebound. Oh, and Zubak lifts it over the top of the net. Far side. What a great chance by Prevo as her shot led to a big rebound. Zubak digging away for the puck against De Rocher. Montreal get it out to center ice where Daou flip it in, flips it into the zone and then peels off for a change. Greco first on it for Toronto. She plays it ahead, intended for Allen. That's a judge to be tipped, so no icing against the Furies as Montreal bring it back across center ice. They try to, but it's hammered back inside their own zone. 
Deschenais takes it into the Toronto zone. She's got Emard with her, makes the drop pass. A minute 55 left in the period as Erin Ambrose steps in from the blue line. She takes it all the way behind the goal here. Leaves it on the side of the net. They try jam home. Tylee had to be sharp to make that stop as Montreal was trying for the near post jam home. I'm always fascinated in these goaltending matchups when you have goaltenders of such different statures. Two of the best in the league, but so polar opposites when it comes to heights. Shade Tiley standing 5'11", Mashmeyer just 5'6", and yet they play that same aggressive game. Mashmeyer almost doesn't let that 5'6 frame dissuade her, and it's just amazing to watch the two play such similar games when they stand so far apart. Mashmeyer certainly plays much bigger than the 5'6 frame that she has. She's such an imposing figure in the net for Montreal, and she's been spectacular this season. As that one-timer shot just goes wide of the post, Mashmeyer with a 126 goals against average this season and a 933 save percentage. As Montreal get it back to the point for Rougeau, she goes cross ice to Daou. Her shot from the point gets knocked down to the far corner where Fast battles there against Lafour, and Lafour will go back to the box here Third minor penalty of the game for Sarah Lafour, and she takes this one with a minute 12 left in the second period. Yeah, not the time you want to take that penalty. Not that there's ever a fantastic time to take a penalty, but you give the Furious an opportunity now to tie this one up, heading into the intermission, and it's been so back and forth on even strength. This is going to be a tough kill for the Canadien. The legs have to be tired. They've been expending their energy, going back and forth, trying to keep up with this tempo. It's been relentless. A huge ping pong match for both teams and a fantastic opportunity now for Toronto as they finally get that, or they try to get the line sorted out as we finally had the last member, Emma Greco, coming out on this power play unit. Sarah Nurse battles for the puck off the draw. Toronto take possession. Howard plays it back to the point for Greco. Back to Howard. Far side hash mark. She's defended by Willard. Plays it down low behind the net. Oh, what a save! Are you kidding me? Call the police. That was robbery as Mashmeyer flashing the leather, taking away what should have been the game time goal. Let's get another look at this chance. Oh, what a stop. You can't teach that. That's all instincts. You have to be ready to get that glove up in a hurry especially when you have a player like that sneaking into the slot. But yeah, absolute robbery from Mashmeyer. You're going to see that on the highlights for a long, long time. And Sarah Nurse is going to have nightmares about that save for a long, long time as Spooner set her up on that beauty chance. Howard takes the sharp angle shot, and that one goes high over top. It hops over the stick of channel, and just with 38 seconds left in the period, Toronto will have to retrieve it from inside their own zone. Renata Fast settles down the rolling puck. 30 seconds remaining here in the period. 118 left on the Toronto power play, which nearly equalized moments ago. Howard receives the pass across the blue line. Shot right on, big rebound. Spooner hammers away at it. Over top of the net to the far corner where it's scooped up by Nurse. Nurse plays it down low for Howard. 12 seconds left in the period. Howard battling there against Rougeau. Kicks it over to Spooner. Nurse takes possession, six seconds left, back to the point. Quinn, there's the pass to Channel. She lets the shot fly, tipped by Nurse, and it just goes over top the net. Great sequence and great pressure by the Furies with the power play to end the second period. They come oh so close to equalizing, and if not for a spectacular glove save by Emirates Mashmeyer, we would be tied, but with 40 minutes in the books, Montreal takes a one nothing lead to the break as Le Canadien strike on the first of the season by Aaron Ambrose to take a one nothing lead as we await a interview with a Montreal player coming up here as Adam Jenkins heads down to ice level. We'll stay with you in just a, for a few more seconds as we get set for that interview. A good second period there from the Furies as they respond after going down one nothing, and they generated a number of quality chances, especially late there on the power play. As it looks like we'll have Aaron Ambrose, the former Toronto Fury, and the goal scorer here in this game, getting set to join Adam Jenkins down at ice level. A great second period as Montreal has a one nothing lead, courtesy number 14, Aaron Ambrose. She scored on a beauty. And she joins Adam Jenkins down at ice level as we get set for our second intermission interview. 
First goal of the season opens the scoring. How good does it feel to get that monkey off your back and get the first of the season? It's good, but I mean, we're working on the win here. So I think that's a big thing is kind of continuing in the third and pushing for another few and uh, just staying sound defensively. You just saw a fantastic save from your netminder, Mashmeyer. How important is she to this team? She's a backbone. I mean, her, our goaltending is, is pretty good. We, I'd say we have probably the best trio in the league. So we're lucky to have that and saves like that make it really easy for me to be a defenseman, that's for sure. So as a Keswick girl, you're probably playing in front of some friends and family. Does that make it a little more exciting when you get to the rink and see the people before the game? Yeah, absolutely. It'll be good to see family after the game and stuff, and tomorrow there'll be another good crowd. So it's nice to come back home and see everybody and hopefully come away with two wins this weekend. And speaking of adding a little bit more extra to a game, playing against your old team, how do you uh, how do you separate that and you get sort of readjusted to saying, okay, I know the game plan, but they also know how I play too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the year here that I had was great, and they've done a great great job for me as an organization. I appreciate everything they did, that they did. It's a first class organization, and I'm happy to be in Montreal now, and obviously happy to see some friends and stuff after the game. All right, Aaron. Twenty minutes away from the win. Good luck in the third period, and thanks for your time. Thank you very much. That's Aaron Ambrose. One nothing the score for the Canadien de Montreal after twenty or two periods of play. Excuse me. Send it back up now to Nico in the booth. Thank you very much, Adam. Thank you very much, Aaron. Still one period to go here from the MasterCard Center. 40 minutes in the books. It's Le Canadien and the Montreal with a 1-0 lead over the Toronto Furies. Third period action coming up. You're watching CWHL Live. than you think. Scotiabank.
Like people, businesses have their journey, their path, sometimes straight, but more often evolving, growing, and adapting. And like people, businesses' needs change, creating the need for knowledge in areas like accounting, consulting, and tax. Areas critical to your continued growth and success, all part of the journey, and all part of what we do together with you. So that when your business has arrived, it's ready to keep going. MNP, wherever business takes you.
third period of play coming up live from the MasterCard Center in Toronto as we get set for the teams to rejoin the action and take the ice. Both teams lined up, ready to go. The officials already on the ice as we get you set for the third period of play here between the Toronto Furies and Le Canadien de Montreal. A pretty good game, entertaining, and lots of skill, speed, and chances on the ice. But so far, just one goal separating these two teams, and it was a former Toronto Fury coming through for Le Canadien de Montreal to put them up 1-0 as Aaron Ambrose sniping one off the left post, the crossbar, and then the right post before it dances across the line. That's the lone goal in this game as we get set for the third period of play here on CWHL Live. My name's Nico Cardarelli, joined in the booth by Adam Jenkins. Adam, we've seen a bit of everything here. It's been one heck of a game, and I expect the third period to be much of the same in what we saw in the first two. Took the words right out of my mouth. A lot more of the same, I think, is exactly what we're going to see in this third period. And I really do think that this 48-second penalty kill for Lake Canadienne is going to be so crucial if obviously to keep Toronto off the board, keep it a one goal game, but try and suppress any kind of attack that Toronto can get going out of the gates. That would do wonders for momentum. And this is a game where momentum could dictate who takes it at the end of the night. Montreal will throw out Marie-Philippe Poulin and Melody Daou to kill the remainder of this penalty, at least the start, 48 seconds remaining in the Montreal penalty. Toronto send their big guns out led by Sarah Nurse at center, Brittany Howard on the left wing, Natalie Spooner playing the right wing, Renata Fast at the right point, and Emma Greco on the left point. And this was the line that connected for that great opportunity late in the period for the Furies. Third period of play underway as Poulin wins the faceoff back inside her own zone. Montreal skating left to right here across your screens in the third period as they try hammer it out. Kept in by Howard, Spooner takes the loose puck. 35 seconds remaining on the power play. Nurse plays it back to the point for Fass. Near side to Greco, back to Fass at the top of the point. She feeds that one to Nurse. Near side to Greco, steps in, lets the shot fly. That's blocked as Ambrose getting in the way of that one. Greco holds it at the hash marks. 15 seconds remaining in the Toronto power play. Spooner feeds it out to Howard. From the near corner, Howard skates around the top of the circle, lets the shot fly, a screened attempt that was blocked by Ambrose and then she sends it down the length of the ice. And despite some great chances, good pressure, Toronto unable to capitalize, now 0 for 5 on the power play. The Furies, good passing through the zone as Zubak brings it out. She's held up at the Montreal blue line by Broll. It's picked up by Hillary Knight. Knight tries to feather the pass through to Saulnier. Good job to stay on side as she gets it back to Knight. Behind the net intended for the four into the near corner where it's picked up by Saulnier. Back to the point, Daryl Shea tees one up, redirected by Knight as she was cutting through the slot and that deflection just missed beating the goaltender, Tylee. Nice work by Montreal here as they try to dig the puck out. Knight providing some good forward checking but it's Chano coming away with the puck for Toronto. She has her pocket pick. Montreal retake possession led by De Roche. Over to Broll. Sophie Broll sidesteps Dark Angelo, flips the puck in, and on the back end of a long shift, Montreal gets some changes here as they get the puck back. Clement Hedra brings it into the zone. She's got Deschenais heading to the net. Clement Hedra, she's forced behind the goal as Amard comes in to take possession. Amard back to the point. Willard, she lets the shot fly again, redirected and just went wide as Clement Hedra gets the tip for Montreal. Quinn, as Toronto moves it along the near side boards, Dark Angelo takes possession, leaves it for Vela. Vela backhands it into the Montreal zone, but not deep, and here comes Montreal as Clement Hedra trying to dive after it. Hit the ice awkwardly, but she's got a smile on her face and she'll head over to the Montreal bench. Dark Angelo chopping for the loose puck. Howard gets it back to Dark Angelo. She cycles to the far corner. Centered in front, but that's broken up by Bate. Dawu makes the pass to Bate into the zone. Good drop pass to Dawu. She tries to shield it there from Dark Angelo. Brings it behind the goal. Centers in front. Backhand attempt by Bate. That's knocked down. Bate gets it back, rips one, and it goes wide of the near post. Suzuki gets to it first for Toronto. Rougeau pinching in from the point, keeps it alive. Matei centers in front. 
Good defending there by Fideski. She chops it to the far corner. Bate once again with it. Poulin tries to tee it up. That's off the stick and out of play. Faceoff stays in the Toronto zone. Still waiting for that Fury's offense to click and come alive. Started tonight with the second fewest goals in the league, just eight through their first five games of the season. And while there's still plenty of hockey to be played, we saw this in their last homestand when Shenzhen was here. They were close, they were on the doorstep all game long, but eventually they just ran out of time. And Montreal's a team that's not gonna sit back and let them come to them. So they really have to create some chances for themselves before this game gets too far out of hand. LaFour threw the puck in front. It went off of fast and dangerously towards the goal, but Tylee was there. Toronto working away offensively now as Nursey tries to center that one in front for Spoonsy, but nothing doing. Fast comes in to take the puck, keeping it alive for Toronto. Spooner down low to Nurse, back to Spooner. Good diving block there by Ambrose. Shot, the one-timer got blocked by Ambrose as McNeil fighting for the puck in the far corner. Nice work there by Fast to keep it in. But here comes Desrochers for Montreal. That was actually Willard as Knight hammers it into the zone, knocked down by Fast. Plays it near side to Greco. As Sarah Nurse gets a stick on it. Icing waved off. Good hustle there by McNeil to beat out the call. Spooner digging away for the puck. Takes it all the way behind the goal against Willard. Into the far corner. Natalie Spooner trying to shield it. As Levine all over her back. Nice work by Spooner to step around to defender. Let's the shot fly. What a save as Mashmeyer holds the puck against her blocker after some beautiful individual work there from Natalie Spooner. And Mashmeyer showing why she's the reigning goaltender of the week. Another fantastic save. Spooner got that shot up in a hurry. And once again, Mashmeyer in the right position, started high with the trapper and the blocker and shut down any open net that Spooner was looking at. A good contingent of Montreal fans down, uh, in the house down in that corner where they're battling for the puck. As they hold their breath, Julie Allen lets the shot fly. The rebound sitting there. Mashmeyer thought she had it. Net finally comes off there after the goal mouse scramble, but Mashmeyer getting a little bit lucky. Toronto unable to capitalize with the puck sitting in the blue ice. Yeah, Mashmeyer thought she had it, and I think Zubak thought that Mashmeyer had it as well, but you're right, just sitting there wide open in the crease, and good heads up play from Zubak, who was all alone to spot the loose puck and jam away, but somehow the Canadian once again able to keep the puck out of the net. I don't know if she's got horseshoes in those pads somewhere, but Emirates Mashmeyer having all the luck right now for Montreal. She continues to play spectacular between the pipes as her team has a 1-0 lead with 15-11 left here in the third period of play. Delayed offside against Toronto. They give up possession to Amard as she brings it into the zone for Montreal. Nice job to step around a couple of defenders and as she tried to shovel it towards the net, she lost her footing. Here goes Toronto, led by Prevo. Carolyn Prevo tries to get around Desrochers. Desrochers bodies her into the boards. That's going to be a penalty against Montreal as Desrochers getting a little too aggressive there. She did well to ride Prevo into the boards, but then the body slam at the end gets the call. And Toronto going back to the power play. Their sixth power play opportunity of this game. Here's the penalty call. Yeah, and you're exactly right. It's just the follow through. You're, everyone always sort of scoffs and says there's there's no checking, there's no hitting in women's hockey. That's not true. It is very much still a contact sport. You cannot body check, but you can separate your check from the puck. You can rub people out into the boards, and that's exactly and that is exactly what happened from De Roche, but it was just that follow through to send her to the ice that got her to, that got her the gate for two minutes. De Roche having an impromptu conversation through the penalty box with a couple of fans as she disagrees with the call and tries to plead her case. Her team has to defend now as Natalie Spooner steps off the back wall, lets the shot go, and Mashmeyer knocking it down to make the save and then covering up the rebound. Great chance there as Spooner is buzzing. She's starting to get going here for Toronto. And a good nose for the puck as well there from Sarah Nurse. Just the one goal so far this season and one of the Olympians on this team. She knows how to put the puck in the back of the net and Toronto just waiting for her to hit her groove. Still early in the season, I'm sure she will, but to get one now and tie the game would do wonders for her confidence and the Toronto momentum. Nurse won the faceoff back to Greco. They move the puck around as Howard does well to hold possession for Toronto along the near board. Spooner back to the point for Fast. Her shot right on with the screen in front by Nurse and Mashmeyer doing well to battle for sight lines. She snags that with the glove hand. Yeah, pretty good screen, but not quite good enough to beat a goaltender of the caliber of Emmerance Mashmeyer. 
way too easy for her. Track that puck all the way off the stick and into the trapper, and she'll have a face off to her right. Sarah Nurse lining up for the faceoff for Toronto. Kicks it back to Spooner, back to the point, and we've got a whistle as I think we're going to retake the faceoff here. Yeah, I'm not sure who the violation was on the faceoff came from, but it's that's what it was, the faceoff violation, as both officials talk about it. Very late call, though. Also have the referee skating to the timekeeper's area now, probably just to discuss time on the clock. 14.06 is what the clock shows right now. We'll see if they add on a couple more seconds. Both of these teams on winning streaks coming into today. Montreal with two straight wins. The Furies with three straight. As Danny Brunet gets a bit of an explanation from the referee, as does Toronto coach Courtney Kessel. Minute 20 remaining on the Toronto power play. Spooner will come in to take the face off. Uh, some laughs exchanged there between Spooner and Clement Hedra. Spooner wins it back to Greco. She feathers it down low. Howard to Spooner, back to Howard. All the way back to the point for Greco along the boards. Tipped in front, that's knocked down. And here goes Rougeau for Montreal with 108 left on the Toronto power play. Lafour chops it into the zone. Greco coming up with it. She'll start the breakout as she leaves it there for Renata Fast. Tipped ahead, Sarah Nurse tries to get it over to Fast. They do well to complete that pass. 45 seconds left on the Toronto power play as Sarah Nurse cuts to the net, centered in front for Spooner, and that's off to the near corner. Sarah Nurse shielding the puck there from the check of Clement Hedra. She gets tripped up, no call. Renata Fast unleashes one. Big rebound as Clement Hedra clears it along the near boards. Howard gets to it with 30 seconds left on the Toronto power play. Fast receives the pass, her shot gets blocked. And cleared out to center ice where Channel takes possession. She dumps it off to Howard, flips it into the zone. Jess Vela fl uh, knocks it down with the glove. She's battling against Clement Hedra. As Willard in there as well defensively. Channel flips it over to the far side point. Quinn lets the shot fly off the end boards. Vela receives it. Two seconds left on the power play as Channel's one-timer gets fearlessly blocked. The Montreal player De Rocher now out of the box. Clement Hedra in a world of pain after blocking that blast from Channel. Marie Fulette Poulin takes possession for Montreal. She brings it into the zone. Stick handling into the slot. Drives wide, lets the shot fly. Big rebound as it's picked up by Jess Vela. Great chance there for Marie Fulette Poulin. Allen dumps it in. Brawl gets to it first for Montreal. Good pressure from Julie Allen, the lone four checker as now here comes Marie Foulette Poulin, the Montreal captain. She makes the pass to Hillary Knight. Knight brings it into the zone. Daou there as well for Montreal. Knight into the far corner with 12 minutes remaining in the third. Fideski battling against Knight. Puck comes out as it was Daou centering it, but no one there in a white jersey. And Sophie Bro will have to go back inside her own zone to retain possession. She gives it up as Fideski steps in from the point, lets it fly and it's snagged by the glove hand of Mashmeyer. Yeah, a pair of mistakes both from Montreal and Toronto. They won, obviously, the turnover. You have to really make sure you're communicating with your teammates, but also from the Furies. They're giving you possession, and you had numbers. I think that's a situation where you can take your time. You don't need to flip a quick shot on goal. Obviously, it's the end of a long shift, and you have a lot of tired legs out there, but trust your teammates getting open positions and work the puck around. Sarah Nurse does well to win the faceoff. Spooner lets the shot fly, a low shot. But it's snagged once again by Mashmeyer, and she'll hold that one, taking no chances. Another face-off coming up to the right of Mashmeyer. And I was just going to say, Nico, that's exactly what good goalies do, is they don't let you create, they don't give up anything easy. So even if it's a clinical-looking stoppage of play, they're going to take it every time and let their team reset. McNeil battling behind the net for the puck. She gets wrestled down. Nurse in there as well. She gets muscled off the puck, and Rougeau flips it to the near boards. Hillary Knight chopping away at it. Hammers it down the ice where Senna Suzuki in a foot race there against Jill Saulnier. Gives it up. Knight tries to dance her way around Nurse and Nurse gets the better of Knight. Here goes Spooner. Spooner makes the pass to McNeil into the zone. McNeil trying to drive around the defender. Daou, good job there by the rookie and here comes Montreal. Knight, good lead pass to Saulnier. She tries to shield it on the backhand. 
Greco on her defensively and flips it off the glass and out of the zone with 10.55 remaining in the third period. Aaron Ambrose, the lone goal scorer in this game, makes the pass to Willard. Willard under pressure, coughs it up to Vela. She gets chopped down. Vela let the shot fly. She can't believe there's no call there as the shot went wide. And once again, Jess Vela, aggressive on the forecheck, nearly causes the turnover. Fast holds it in at the zone. That one's knocked down. Clearing attempt fanned on by Willard. Dark Angelo steps in from the point. Her shot gets blocked. Montreal scrambling defensively right now as Toronto applying all sorts of forechecking pressure. Fast with the poke check, gets it to Howard. Finally, it's picked off by Montreal. And here's a rush led by Bate. Bate drives wide, defended beautifully that time by Prevo as they take the puck away. Greco has it behind her own goal. Greco plays it off the boards, down the ice, intended for Dark Angelo. She's in a foot race there against De Roche, but it'll be an icing call against the Furies with 9.58 to go in the third. I remember the first time I watched Montreal play in person and I was just blown away by the size of Hillary Knight. The contrasting with the different styles of play, you get the small shifty captain and Marie-Philippe Poulain. And just when you think you're done with the two of them, oh yeah, you have Anne-Sophie Bate to worry about as well. So deep on offense is this Montreal team, dangerous on all lines. You got a look at the replay there on that chance from Jess Vell. And on the replay, you can see that the stick of Willard comes across and hits the legs of Vela. Nine times out of ten, you see that called a tripping. I guess this was that one time where it doesn't get called. Tough break there for the Furies after some good forechecking pressure by Jess Vela. Julie Allen receives the pass from Cheyenne D'Arcangelo. Nice job to try dance around the defender. De Roche lost her footing, but did enough to keep the puck in front of her. Here comes Amard, tries to split the four checkers, nothing doing as Allen takes the puck away, plays it up to Prevo. Prevo centered in front, Zuba couldn't quite get that cleanly. Allen does well to hold the pressure in, but here comes Montreal as Clement Hedra feeds a pass ahead to Saulnier. Saulnier, the lone Montreal player in the zone, cuts through the slot. Puck taken away from her by Sarah Nurse. She gives it away to Hillary Knight. Knight tees one up. What a big block there by Quinn. Shot from the boards, steered aside by Tylee. Uh, Sarah Nurse under pressure now by Lafour. Nurse spins away and does well to gain some time and space for Toronto. Oh, what a pass to Zubak, right in. Huge shot, huge save by Mashmeyer as she got just enough to deflect that over top the goal. What a beautiful pass by Sarah Nurse to spring Brittany Zubak on that break. Montreal slow things down as Lefort brings it out from behind her own goal. Saulnier, she loses it there to the poke check of Nurse. Toronto aggressive on the four check with 8.15 remaining in the third period and the Furies trailing 1-0. Rougeau under pressure there from McNeil. She spins away behind her own goal. And she'll lead the breakout for Montreal. Rougeau tape to tape pass. As that shot from the outside, easily handled by Tylee, a good save and a good hold as Dawu let that shot fly for Montreal. And Montreal's been so good in so many areas tonight, really not giving Toronto much of a chance to create any offense. The one weakness that they continue to show again and again is taking care of the puck. And I think if Toronto's going to tie this game, if not take the lead at some point, it's going to be based off of a turnover. Ambrose holds it in for Montreal, pinned in along the far boards where Suzuki digs away against Marie-Philippe Poulain. Sena Suzuki, former member of the Japanese national team, and she's been with Toronto for a few seasons now, doing a good job out there on the blue line as Marie-Philippe Poulain brings it back in for Montreal. Poulain all the way behind the goal, shielding it there, centers in front. But Dark Angelo takes possession for Toronto. Good stretch pass to Howard. A one on two as Howard drives wide, lets the shot fly. It's off the defender stick, Ambrose, and up into the screen. Good work there from Howard on that break. Yeah, Howard once again creating offense from Toronto. Her line mates just a few steps behind making the blue line. A situation where a drop pass is possible, but you have to have the communication and it has to be early. And that's easy to say when you're standing back here in the booth, Nico, <laughs> not when you've been on the ice all night long and you are tired. Well, the war of attrition coming to head here is a good save by Mashmeyer. She had the paddle down, ready for that deflection in front by Spooner. 7.05 remaining in the third period of play 
in this tightly contested game between the Toronto Furies and Le Canadien de Montreal. one nothing to score here in favor of Montreal. The goal coming from former Toronto Fury, Aaron Ambrose. Puck flipped into the Toronto zone. Spooner battling there against Clement Hedra, and it's Spooner who comes away with the puck for the Furies. She chips that ahead just out of the reach of Fast. Nurse can't get to it. Clement Hedra brings it in, steps aside the defender. Big rebound. Oh, what a save by Tylee. A tremendous first stop, an even better second one. And here goes Toronto up the ice. Fast loses the puck. Coming off the bench, Prevo keeps it in for the Furies. Prevo digging away for it. It's Ambrose taking possession. Ambrose makes the pass to Bannon. She brings it into the zone. As defended there by Channel with 6-10 remaining in the third. Toronto take possession. Spooner, her pass for Quinn. Chopped down by Montreal, held in at the line, but just as quickly it comes back out. Channel takes possession for the Furies. Goes cross ice with that pass intended for Julie Allen out of her reach. Not hitting anybody. That's a nice in call against Toronto with 5.52 left in the third. And Shade Tiley keeping the Furies in this game. Had positioning, had to keep her head to make the first stop. But what is the most impressive thing about this play that you're about to see in just a second here is not only a fantastic adjustment to make the first stop, but to kick that pad out and deny the trailer on the doorstep. Man, oh man, what a stop from Shade Tiley. Continues to impress all night long as we have a Kennedy end getting kicked out of the faceoff. But other than that, opening and lone goal where she had absolutely no shot. Tylee has been perfect. jean vievre Banyan probably thought she had a goal for sure on that follow-up play, but what a tremendous stop by Tylee to keep her game, our team in this game as that shot off the half wall from De Rocher nearly redirected in past the blocker arm, but Toronto take possession. They clear it out across center ice where Montreal gets it right back. LaFour brings it into the zone with under five and a half minutes to play. Knight receives the pass. Her shot, by the time she got it off, the space was closed, and it got blocked. Good work there by Toronto. Desrochers feeds it up for Saulnier. Does well to get the puck back. Drops it off to LaFour. Saulnier heading to the net. LaFour's shot off the side of the goal after Quinn got a piece of it. LaFour back to the point for Ambrose. She settles down the rolling puck. Let's the shot fly. It's wide of the near post and picked up by Prevo. Howard brings it into the zone for the Furies. Great move to get around the defender, lets the shot fly, lively bounce off the end boards that actually got past the goaltender. Mashmeyer came right through her legs but with the pressure from Howard. The net comes off its pegs. What a great sequence there for Toronto. Let's get another look at this chance created by Brittany Howard. Yeah, she's been creating chances all night long. Pings off the post, takes an awkward carom off the end wall and Montreal perhaps bailed out by the net once again coming off the moorings. Mashmeyer was in all kinds of pretzels in the crease and luckily for the Canadien, the net comes off, but pretty good defensive positioning as well. Got to give credit where credit is due for Montreal. But this is the time of the game where you're going to see Toronto start to cheat a little bit on offense because they need some offense and they are running out of time to get it. Well, they've got to start taking some risks. They've been working hard here in the third. They've yet to find pay dirt. They've got to defend on this chance as Dawu spins away from some defensive pressure. She plays it into the corner for Poulin. Feathers it behind the net intended for Bate, but that's taken away. Nice defensive work as Sarah Nurse comes away with the puck. Howard gets it over to the near side for Spooner. Spooner defended by Poulin, makes the drop pass to Nurse. Nurse tees it up, that's blocked. Big block there by Willard, and here comes Montreal. A potential two-on-one is Bate and Dawu. Bate lets the shot fly. That's blocked, rebound, and it's picked up by Spooner. Spooner's pass picked off by Dawu. She tries to feed it for Clement Hedra. That's knocked away by Nurse. And it's Greco taking it across center ice for Toronto with four minutes remaining in the third. Rougeau passes it ahead to Dawu. She chips it in. Fast gets to it first for Toronto. Montreal get away with a play at the line that looked to be offside. They take possession once again as Deschenais flips it to the far side, knocked down by the skate of Vela. And here goes McNeil for the Furies. Dark Angelo cutting to the net, handled by the paddle of Mashmeyer to the near boards. Dark Angelo feathers it down low to McNeil. McNeil under pressure from Clement Hedra. She coughs it up, and here goes Imard for Montreal with 3.20 left in the third. 
Rougeau brings it across the blue line. Nice job to get around one defender, lost the handle on the puck, and Channel comes in to take it away. Amard battling for possession behind the net. Vela comes away with it for the Furies. D'Arcangelo receives the pass. Bit of crossed lines there between D'Arcangelo and McNeil. The two chip it in and then thought about peeling off for changes, but now they'll hold the zone with some forechecking pressure. Ambrose gets around McNeil. Room to skate it across center ice with under three minutes remaining to play. Dumped to the far corner where LaFour takes possession. She's challenged, good work by Quinn, and here comes Toronto as Howard gets the pass. Drops it to Nurse. Nurse takes it down low to the corner, tried to feather it, that's knocked down. LaFour gets to it first for Montreal, and Saulnier makes sure they clear the zone. 2.25 remaining in the third. Puck passed up to Spooner. Nice job to cut in, lets the shot fly. And that one just went over top of the gloved hand top corner. Nice job by Natalie Spooner to cut into the middle and open up that shooting lane. LaFour spinning back into her own zone. Leaves it for Ambrose. She backhands one off the boards where it's picked up by Dawu. 2.02 remaining here in the third period of play. Aaron Ambrose. And Nico, this is where it gets tricky for Coach Courtney Kessel to decide when you want to yank Tylee from the cage because it's been such a back and forth game. You really don't want to expose that empty net because one goal is, is easily to come back from, two, not so much. Ambrose back inside her own zone, hammers it off the wall. Bate chips it out to Poulin as she returns the pass to Bate. They bring it into the zone. Bate to Poulin, right on, big rebound. It's steered away, and here comes Toronto. Nice work by Tylee as she starts to inch towards the bench. Nothing doing yet. Montreal bring the puck back in. Oh, I thought Dawu had towed the line. The referees say no, offside against Montreal with 1.22 left here in the third. And on that scoring chance, the last one for Montreal, Tylee again showing off her alertness and her presence in the crease, she's had a very active stick. She knows when to use her length to poke it away and create some separation from the forecheck and the puck. And now Toronto down to 82 seconds and they'll call their timeout. Well, you had a look at that great chance on the replay and Tylee doing an incredible job in net for Toronto, especially on that rebound chance to knock it away with the paddle. Montreal trying to close this one out, defending a one goal lead here as they try and prove to four and one on the young season. And these are tough to game plan for the coaching staff when the faceoff isn't in the offensive zone. When it's in the neutral zone, it's tough because in every situation you're game planning for in case you lose, but in case you lose, the draw becomes that much more imperative in this situation here. But I would imagine if Toronto's able to win this one back, you'll see Tylee make a beeline for the bench. Well, the Furies will send out Greco, Fast, Howard, Spooner, and Sarah Nurse. Montreal counter with Marie-Philippe Poulain, Melody Daou, and Sophie Bate, Catherine Daou, and Lorianne Rougeau. Neutral zone face-off, won by Poulain. She dumps it into the far corner with a minute 15 remaining here in the third period. It's picked up by Greco. She loses possession in front of her own bench. Poulain wisely just chips it back into the corner. 20 seconds gone, 105 left here in third period of play as Spooner brings it up into the zone and there goes Tylee heading to the net. Final minute of play in the third period as Sarah Nurse battling against the end boards for possession. Fast digs it out as Nurse closed down by a couple of Montreal defenders. They try pin it up against the boards. A quick whistle from the referees and we'll have a stoppage with 43 seconds left in the third. Toronto has the extra attacker out on the ice and the offensive zone faceoff that they were hoping for. Gotta love the juxtaposition of the quick whistle along the boards there. I remember in the second period, there was a span of about a minute where the battle was going along the boards. Then you can let the clock wind down. Here you gotta be a little more conservative with the clock. Off the faceoff, Poulin wins it to Ambrose. She rims it around the near boards. Chopped by Bate. Greco under pressure as Anne-Sophie Bate chases her into the corner for the loose puck. Renata Fast trying to dig it out. Bate just trying to keep it pinned up against the boards. 26.5 seconds remaining here and the faceoff in the Toronto zone. So Tylee will have to go back into the net for the Furies. 
and that's such an incredible veteran play from Bate there. Uses her speed, gets position along the boards, and I don't think the puck's actually stuck it's in her skate holder. <laughs> The now, blade we've holder had, that connects the boot to the blade, and they're still trying to hack away at it. We've had some incredible highlights in this play. That moment has to go on bar down. <laughs> that was amazing. And as you said, a great play by Bate, a great veteran play to keep it pinned up against the boards. Keep it pinned up so well, it was right in her skate. And that's what captains are for as Poulain comes out <laughs> and uses the butt end of the stick to finally break it free. But that's pretty much <laughs> as perfect as a play along the boards can get when you get it stuck in your blade holder. Well, the faceoff comes outside the Toronto zone. Toronto opt to keep the goaltender, Tylee, on the bench with 25 seconds left here in the third period. And we've got a whistle, and this faceoff's going to come back inside the Montreal zone. A lucky break there for Toronto. Uh, that was a bit of a bizarre sequence on that one. The only call that makes sense to me, and without seeing any symbols from the officials is, is icing, but that was a close one along the red line, but the Fury will take it with a net empty, 21.2. A face-off win from Nurse here is key. Nurse against Poulin on the draw. Nurse wins it back to Channel at the left point. She leaves it for Spooner. Poulin does well to chop it away towards the empty net, and Sophie Bate has a foot race. Can she get to it? Just gets to the puck ahead of the line to negate the icing as Daou battling. Three seconds left here. Montreal do some great work on the road. They play the perfect road game. They get one goal and that's all they needed as the former Toronto Fury, Erin Ambrose, gets her first of the season and that holds up as the game winner. Le Canadien de Montreal securing a 1-0 victory tonight over the Toronto Furies. And once again, just a smart, responsible veteran move from Bate there. One of the worst things you can do in that situation is try and force a pass back into the slot to go for the empty net. The Dallas Stars know that too well <laughs> on how an empty net can cost you an opportunity back the other way. So Bate does the right thing, hangs onto the puck and realizes that time is more important than a second goal. And it was that kind of composed veteran game that won it for Le Canadien. Well, that's the game. The Montreal Le Canadien take this one over the Toronto Furies. The final score here from the MasterCard Center, one to nothing. As we get set for a post-game interview, Adam Jenkins heads down to the ice level as we get one of the stars of today's game, stars of the game, presented by Tim Hortons. While the Furies line up at center ice, they get set to salute the home crowd. As the Furies played oh so well here tonight, and if not for an incredible effort by Emirates Mashmeyer, the Furies would have had a tying goal late in the second. But Toronto skates off after a 1-0 de defeat to the hands of Le Canadien du Montréal. Nice salute there by the Furies to the home crowd. They'll skate off to the locker room. And a great game by rookie goaltender Shea Tiley, who was spectacular for Toronto between the pipes. Standing by for the Tim Hortons three stars of the game. As we've got 400 Kipling down at ice level, the Furies mascot this season. What a great move by the organization. Absolutely love that. Here comes your Tim Hortons three stars of the game. Ambrose scoring the game-winning goal, the former Fury, your third star of the game. Fury's goaltender, Shea Tiley, your second star of the game. And with her first shutout of the season, your first star of the game, Montreal goaltender, Emirates Mashmeyer. Both of these teams are back in action tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Make sure you head down here to the MasterCard Center as that game will not be streamed. So if you want to take it in, come down here to the MasterCard Center as Puck Drop will be going at 1 p.m. tomorrow. 
Well, the three stars will take their traditional photo. A nice moment there for two young goaltenders. As Shea Tiley and Emerence Mashmeyer put on quite the show here today in what was a real goaltending clinic and a tight contest which finishes in a 1-0 victory for Le Canadien du Montréal. Well, that looks like it's going to be it for the broadcast here tonight. On behalf of our technical crew behind the scenes, led by Steve Mitchell for Adam Jenkins, my name's Nico Cardarelli. Thank you so much for tuning in to CWHL Live this evening. Once again, the final score from the MasterCard Center, Montreal 1, Toronto 0. We're Standing by is, we're hoping to get a post-game interview here, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Both teams heading to the locker room. And that's going to do it. We're going to call it a night. Once again, fans, thank you so much for tuning in. The final score here at the MasterCard Center, Montreal 1, Toronto 0 for Steve Mitchell for... Adam Jenkins, my name's Nico Cartarelli. Have yourself a good night. We'll see you next time on CWHL Live.